this morning. I did the timing belt on this engine and I observed that the timing on the pump was out tremendously. And what they'd done is they'd moved the pulley round to compensate for the timing. This is wrong. There is uh, something not quite right. What's happened is it, the flange on the pump isn't set in the right place. So I didn't want to let it go at that. I thought it wasn't very professional because the next guy who comes to do this will try and use the uh, timing pin here and it won't fit in the hole. So I thought to myself, here's a good little video for us. A lot of us have got these uh, kits down here. Now I'm going blind off this because I can't see my screen today. But um, a lot of us have got these kits but don't necessarily know how to use them. So I'm going to show you. Now, like I say, I can't see this screen for love and money, but it's a nice bright day, so you should be able to see what's going on. And all I can see is a reflection in the screen. So, this is for uh, the TDIs and the 2.5s and the two and a quarters or whatever. They've got a timing belt on the front. So what's the first thing we've got to do to take off the timing pump, the injector pump? Well, we've got to take the injectors off and we've got to plug some holes up and take some pipes and wires off. That's about, that's about as easy as it gets. So first of all, I'm going to take off the pipes and uh, I'm going to cap them. Wait a minute, let's take these ones off here. Off the injectors as well at the top. Because, like I say, you get these tool kits and you just don't know how to use them. And even I didn't know, I had to work it out. <laughs> it's quite easy, really. So we get the pump, the pipes off. We keep those clean by not dropping them on the floor. And then we get some caps here. And we put them on the back of the injector pump because we don't want any dirt and debris to get into that... Uh, into those injectors and I think the top ones are a different size on the injectors. Yeah, it's not often I'm wrong this time I'm right. So we're just gonna plug them up with some plugs. Alright, so I'm gonna get on and do that. Oh with the injectors plugged up and the back of the injector pipe plugged up and all the ports and openings here all plugged up. You can fasten the pipes out of the way. Take the two bolts that go onto the retainer at the back. And then we're going to fit the, the, uh, the timing pin into the engine at the back. And then, then we're going to just turn the engine over till the pin locks. <clears throat> so now with the cover off, the injector pump's ready to come off except for the bolts holding it to the body. We can see in here there's three bolts and what we're simply going to do is take them off. Mike, it's magic. This isn't going to work. Yes it is. Bear with me. Don't mix these bolts up with any others. These are... Now if you're clever, and don't drop your socket on the floor, you take that ring out. See that ring? Take that out. Now we've got access to the pulley. But I'll, sh I'll take the camera off and I'll show you what we're trying to do. You see in here there's two tapped holes. What we're going to do is put this tool on here. So I like that. Now hopefully you can see the two tapped holes. There they are. So there they are. There, there they are now. And you put that on, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw the pulley forward so it touches on here. Are you with me? So, so it's off the nose, but it can't go anywhere really. This can't go anywhere. Very difficult to film, but if you, you, I'll set this up and you'll see what I mean. Right, so I've got two better bolts here because these have got the flange heads on. I align the tool up. I observe where the threads are. Yep, 
Now these don't want to be too long and too short. These are exactly the right size. I'll write down in the text what the actual bolt size are because some of them are not very good. Now you can see I'm not using an impact or anything. I'm drawing off the I'm drawing the pulley off the nose of the injector pump. This is why you need a spanner just to feel feel your way. There you see it's starting to nip up now. There. Hold it. Now we can take the pump off. Fortunately all the bolts in this are coming out beautifully. And the access being on a table like this is brilliant. You know. Just at a nice height. Yeah, this pump looks pretty new. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of this pump. But it's certainly not set right. We'll, set, we'll find this out when we go into the shop and put it in the bench. Right, last one. Last one's always a tricky one. You should do the last. You should do this bottom one first, really, because it is a tricky one to get to. But I thought about this job, and I thought, oh, I might as well do it on the on the bench rather than on the vehicle. There we go. That's the bolts out. Now, with a bit of luck, this pump will come out. Hey, 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 hey. look at that! You see, no tears. Now, for the observant of you, you can see here our problem. That's not lining up properly. So let's get this into the bench and let's set it up right. Just for ease of uh, working on. I've put my pump bracket on there. We, we did this when we were doing injector pumps. I just made a little bracket so it can be changed over and used at different angles. What I've done is <clears throat> I've taken out the plug out of the back. This is where the gauge goes. But you will observe here, this is the locking pin for the shaft. Now, this is our problem because this, well it isn't a problem, it might be a problem for you. <laughs> but. Uh, On some of the vehicles, on the earlier ones, they had a little horseshoe type bracket that went on here. And what you used to do was back this off, take out the horseshoe, and then tighten it back up again. Because this is the thing that locks up your shaft. John shaft. Alright. Now I might explain better if I show you the two together. This is the old type with the horseshoe, and this is the new type, and note, the pin, head, the pin height is different. When we put this in here, we're not bothered about a seal or anything like that. We just want it to lock. You'll see, what, you'll see in a minute. So we turn that, till it starts to lock. Going against the o ring now, you see. It's not because I'm weak. <laughs> Should have got a ratchet, shouldn't I? Anyway, so now it's nipped up, then we'll back it off half a turn. Alright, the next step is we're going to get a 22mm socket and take this off, this nut off. Now, don't be tempted to put your timing pin in here to lock up the pull pulley, you know, to lock it while you undo it. I use an air impact, it's, it's simple when it comes off and you'll see in a minute. Because 
The thing is what you can do is you can crack the casting which has been kind of common on here and a lot of people have cracked the castings here by turning over the engine with the timing pin in and it just cracks. Let's spin that off. There you go. Now the pump turned around a bit but we're not, we're not really bothered too much about that. So the next thing we're going to do is put this in the vise and turn the pump round until the, the pin is in its firing position at top dead centre. How are we going to do that Mike? We've just taken the nut off. Well we put the nut back on. <laughs> Won't be all that tight but we can turn it with our our hands now it's free. It's just we would just want something to spin that round. We've taken the tension off the nut and I'll get the set out with the timing tools in. This kit here, this is by EKW but I think they all come out the uh, same place in China. This is general for um, injector pumps for all sorts of bits and pieces really. It's a universal kit. But the only bits we need is this, this and this. And what we've done is, at the back of the injector pump, I'll show you in a minute, we've taken off the plug that is here and we're going to insert this gauge. Well, first of all, we've got to take off the point because we don't need that, it's pointless. But we're going to fit this pin onto here. Now, for some Americans in our audience, these are metric. We'll have to get used to it, but we need to find the right setting. Then we're going to put this onto here. Now this is in a sliding fit so we can adjust it. Now you can see the pin coming out and we must make sure that when that's nipped together the pin moves, okay, the gauge moves. Let me go around and I'll show you how it works. This is where the tool fits in here. So what we're going to do I'm just going to back this off a little bit, take it off and screw it in to the back of the injector pump. Then we fit the gauge. But we must make sure that the needle makes contact with the pin there. It's, it's very very close to where it should be. Now it doesn't matter where it is now we're just going to play around with this a little bit and wind that locking sleeve down that clinches round the thing and make sure we've got plenty of lift on the on the uh, dial gauge. All right. Now you see that's sticking a bit so we're going to back that off and just to make sure that that is going to be free. Now this can be a bit tricky to sit up, set up you want it to be nice and free. There you go. Because if you by the process of nipping that, you can bend the shaft a little bit. So what I'm going to do now, I've got the I'm going to set this to zero. Because if I turn the pump backwards, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me see. Now, so if I, what's going on here? Yeah, see what I mean? It's just a bit too tight still but we don't want it to, to jump out. So we want to set to zero, so that will be a, a dead spot on the pump. So as it's coming up, like you move the spanner, so watch, try and watch this and watch this at the same time, it's kind of tricky. But if I turn the spanner, nothing happens. So that is our zero point. Alright, that's our zero point. Next we take the, uh, the timing pin and at the front we're going to turn this to find out what the lift is. See I'm turning turning the spanner but nothing's happening and I'm, I'm getting ready to put the pin in and I'm putting the pin in now. The lift is only 16.016 uh, millimeters. it's not much at all. So. What that proves is that the, the, the flange is on wrong. Let me bring this around and I'll show you. Do with about 20 bloody cameras. So, let me take the pin out. 
I'll turn this back and the gauge is actually on zero, you'll have to believe me. Turn it round until the pin will just drop in. Yep, exactly the same place. So we need to take this off and turn it till the gauge is on uh, uh, 1.6 so it's it's way way out so how do we make sure that that's in its right place well this is a clever thing let me put the camera on yet yeah, the other side on the other side again this is a good shot what we're going to do we're going to take the pin out and turn the pump back to zero that's on its zero point and we're going to turn it till it goes 1.6 so believe me this is where it's going to go so Oh, bloody thing's moving in place now, wait a minute. It's that. So we, we'll turn it to 1.6. There's one. And there's six. And this is the clever part about this pin. Just move it back a bit because that was a bit tight. Tighten this bolt up. And that now will show that the gauge here is spot on 1.6 right but if you come round to the front <laughs> I'm all tangled up with wires today. bloody stuff everywhere if you come round to the front you can observe quite clearly that that's not in line maybe I can move the camera a bit better let's put it square on there you can see it's not in line. Now, that's the point it should be for firing. All right, that's its, that's its firing point, its perfect point. But we had to turn the, the out, outer uh, sprocket in order to get that set in. The problem being is that if somebody else is going to change this belt in the future and they don't know that, they'll just use a timing pin and all the timing will be out. So I'm doing something for you in the future. So what do we do now, Mike? <laughs> well, now we've got to take off this flange. And this is a problem. You need to get yourself a three-legged puller. All right, because they are tight. Now, I can observe on the gauge, the shaft has not moved one bit. So that's not too bad. And to get the nut off here, I just give it a little tap of the hammer and it came off because it wasn't all that tight. Right, here we go with this thing. My favourite. I'll set this up. Right, so, I've set up the three-legged puller. And these are pretty tight. Now I'm still observing here that the gauge has not moved from that 160 mark. So that's why it's vitally important to lock up the shaft. But don't over tighten it. Right. Let's spin this off. Now it should, oh, my leg's falling off. It should go with a bit of a bang. Wait a minute, it just makes, I don't like these three-legged pullers. One day I'll make a proper puller for these. There you go, did you see it snap off? Snap off, snap on. Now, don't use wedges or pulls or anything. And this is the clever bit. Because now, now my gauge has moved when it, with the shock of that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here. See, see how you do it? Now the shock of the, the gun has, has knocked the gauge out the back. <laughs> but I don't think the shaft moved at all. It was just a shock. So I'm going to put the, put the flange on. Put the pin on. And we're going to reset the gauge. Kind of easy. Now we're just going to give this a little nip. Alright, just a nip so we can turn the pump. Alright, now I don't think it's moved at all, but what we're going to do, we're going to reset this gauge and undo the pin on the side. You remember the pin on the side? We're going to take that off, half a turn, take this out. And bring this back to its zero point, which is there. 
Make sure the gauge springs in and out freely. And, that, and set the gauge to zero. Let me take the camera off and I'll show you what I'm rambling on about. So we've got the, ga the gauge off, we've got the flange off here. We've set this to zero. Alright, so now, because you can see, look, if I turn this like this, it has no effect on the gauge. But when we start to turn it, you can see now that as I'm turning this spanner, this is turning round. So we're going to set it onto 1.6. Sorry for me, hands. <laughs> Not very professional, is it? Right, so let's set that to 1.6. 1. 1. Six. See, we were out a bit. All right. So simply, all we do now is make sure that shaft is locked up. Tap that nut off. Where's my hammer gone? I'm obsessed with putting things back now. Like that. Just take it off. You don't really have to take it off completely. Three-legged puller. Pull this off again and keep doing this until it's in line. It's a mess about, but it's worth it. And you can see why people don't bother. Now this time as this has been off before, I'm just going to use a spanner. should come off quite easy without not so violent if you see what I mean. There we go. The gauge did not move so now we put that on with the pin. Where's the pin gone? Where's the pin gone? It was here. Put it on with the pin. Nip it up. Now you can nip it up with the pin with the with the pin in. You know what I mean? You can just nip it ever so slightly. And then we're going to take this off. We're going to undo our pinch bolt on the side. There, did you see it drop back? And it dropped back to zero. We're going to turn one, six, nip. Ta-da! Round of applause, please. So now, we know that that is in its correct place. If you don't believe me... There we go. See? Spot on. So now, all we have to do is tighten up the nut. Now that's more, than, more difficult than it appears. Because, again, we don't want to tighten against this aluminium housing. So I'm going to make a little bracket to go into there, an old pulley or something, just to lock that up. So I've temporarily put a pulley on, it's an old one, and I'm jamming it against the base of my uh, stand with the timing pin. And we're going to tighten this bolt up. So hopefully the pin won't move. Oop, it's coming out fast. Supposed to be 90 newton meters, but oh, oh, that's tight. That's tighter than I usually do. Uh, no, wait a minute. I need to turn this back a bit to get the pin out. Oh no, I'll take that off. There we go. That's all on the bloody floor now. So, <laughs> fortunately, or unfortunately for us. The bolts here don't line up with this. This is a must be off a camshaft one. Take that off. Take that off. Get your pin. Tighten up the bolt. Well, not tighten it up, but turn the pin. And that is exactly 
160. Perfect. So, now we're going to put it back on the oh, car. Just before we go, I'm going to take that temporary pin out and put the original one back in. Uh, it won't tighten up the shaft this one, but uh, it's good to do it now whilst it's still in the stand. Also put the pin, the plug, in the back. Make sure you haven't lost that little copper washer, otherwise it'll leak. Alright, so let's get on with that. The camera's pointing in the right direction, I think it is. That's where we want to be, here. So, we've got an hour pump now. You can see the, the pulley inside. We simply bolt it back on. Come so. So I'll bolt this up and then we'll go to the front. Right, uh, as they say in the uh, Haynes book, uh, replacement is the same as removal in the opposite way around or something like that. So we back off the bolts and take off the tool. Slide that off. And next we put our tool in well, we put the plate back on and we're going to turn the injector pump so that the uh, the pin goes in the hole. Back in it. Oh, look at that, it's moved over. <laughs> Sorry about that bloody camera move, didn't it? Anyway, so what I've done is taken the tool off. Oh no, did I have it off? I can't remember now. I might have missed a bit out because my camera fell over. Uh, all I've done is put the plate in. Yeah, I think I, I was talking to myself, but the camera wasn't on, I couldn't see the red dot. So what I've done is I put the 22 millimeter spanner, turned it, pushed the pin in, locked the pin into the injector pump so everything's now in line. And now I'm just gonna get a 25 Newton meters on those bolts. And that's it. Look, see, lines up beautifully. And remember, the pin is still in the back, so don't forget to take the pin out. Cover on. Where is the cover? Right, see, cover's here. Now, of course, if you've got air conditioning, your air conditioning pulley goes across here. Those on. I'll, I'll tighten these up. And so uh, there we are. I've put the pipes back on. Everything's all bolted up. Put the two bolts that holds the bracket on the back of the pump. Little quick tip: if you want to do your pipes, um, start with the back ones first to take them off and uh, then, then the front ones. Don't do it the other way around because it makes it really difficult to get to the pump bolts underneath. I hope you like that. I hope it was informative. It's not too difficult to do. Oh, that doesn't seem very springy, does it? The hell is wrong there? Dear, may I find all sorts wrong with this thing. <laughs> there's, no, there's hardly any return spring on it. Look at that. What's happened here? Oh, I see. Well, we might as well fix that while we're at it. <laughs> the uh, return spring's come off. It's hooked under here. I don't think it was off when we were messing about with it. It must have been off for a while. It's a bit tricky to put back on. There we go. God, this car will have so much power. Right. Back soon. <laughs>